Okay, uh, we can start. Uh, thank you for coming um, to this show, Eat with the Owner. My pleasure. Um, thank you very much. Your name is Pavel. 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 Yeah. Oh, you can call me Pavel also. Yeah. That's what people have been calling me here. Pavel. Yeah, that's amazing. Actually, I um, uh, after you said you would uh, come to the this show, I did some. Uh, like uh, research on your name, it's pretty good, pretty uh, amazing. Like you achieved a lot, actually. Oh yeah, I try. Um, I think I have, yeah, but more to go. Yeah, last night uh, I even uh, I watched a YouTube you uh, had with another artist, right? Mm -hmm. The Jason. Uh, Jason I, Seiler. I yeah, did Jason a Seiler. podcast with yeah, him. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I watched that show. It's, um, it's part of it. It's amazing, actually. You it's actually a, watched the entire podcast as a non-artist? Oh, that must have been boring. <laughs> it's, it's amazing. It's like uh, it's right now. I I think a lot of people telling stories amazing on the podcast. So you don't have the time restriction. Mm, it's that's amazing. Good. And uh, actually, uh, it's amazing. Like I found like your talent and then what you have done, and uh, it's like. In Montreal, some sometimes I did not know we have a lot of great people in Montreal. Well, I wouldn't. Uh, while I am physically here, I wouldn't say that any of my business or any of my activities have okay. anything to do with Canada. Unfortunately, yeah. really, uh, I have a it's few like clients. But it's in just United States, a, right? United oh. States, yeah. Saudi Arabia, Bahrain, Dubai. Uh, Americans, of course, and I want to start selling to Chinese clients, but I don't know how to reach them because they're not on the social media that I'm on. You're talking to the right person. <laughs> uh, hopefully, because actually China is now the biggest art buyers in the world. Yeah, they're spending that's, the most yeah. money on it. And they actually mm -hmm. love Russian artists because they have a history mm -hmm. of uh, Russian artists uh, from the Soviet times. They came over to China and they taught them traditional painting and drawing. And actually, what's funny is Russians kind of stopped doing it, yeah. but the Chinese, they still have a ton of schools in China, yeah. and they're still doing fantastic, and they're taking that mantle that the Russians yeah. taught them, and they're continuing with it. Yeah, so. it's, yeah, it's amazing. Actually, I noticed more than even 10 years ago, the trend started, like a lot of art collectors in China, a lot of them. Even 10 years ago, I noticed my friend told me, like, uh, even like here, some the paint not so... Like even from kind of the group of seven or other like uh, artists, some of them, some of the paint, they are not very well priced here. They can be sold very, very expensive in China. Very, very high price. I bet I just, uh, mm. I think uh, China is the next biggest market for art. It already is. And uh, I just don't know how to reach them because usually the way I get around <laughs> is I post on Instagram, things yeah. like that. And... Um, Saudi Arabians, Dubai people, Americans, they're all over Instagram, yeah. so I sell through that. Yeah. But Chinese buyers, I don't know where they are. Uh, so they're, like, they're on WeChat, I guess. <laughs> they're on WeChat. <laughs> That's the thing. I don't, I don't know how to get to them, but yeah. uh, I would love to. Um, okay. I've actually I've been to in Russia, uh, yeah. and Sal and I, that's my girlfriend, she's yeah. behind the camera. Yeah. Um, she's the manager. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We went to St. Petersburg, and they have the school there, the Repin Academy, okay. and we went to go visit there. It's an old uh, traditional Russian yeah. school, and it had so many great Chinese students. Like, yeah. literally half the school is really skilled uh, Chinese, Chinese artists. So looks like Harvard today. <laughs> like a lot of Chinese students. Yeah. Yeah, we like learning. Yeah. Actually to save some time, I probably we can start ordering. Like uh, right, let's do it. Yeah. Uh let's order the um, you the know more already? authentic uh dishes, uh, none of the Americanized okay. stuff. So you uh like the braised pork belly were okay? Like yeah, a little yeah, bit greasy? Yeah. I love the um, the pork belly with the sweet potato. Yeah, yeah, that's the one. Yeah. Um, I always go for also the diced chicken is really good. Okay, spicy diced chicken. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You had when did you come? You came here before? Or? Yeah, a million times. But we usually I, we get takeout actually, okay, which okay. is like what we yeah, talked about. Yeah, that's why I did not see you because you have beard. You will stand out. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I'm recognized a lot of times when I do grocery because I have long hair, beard. For Chinese guys, don't look like this way. So a lot of times, like uh, some people say, "Oh, you are the owner of the restaurant on that." So, well, 
some some faces that look familiar, but I don't know who they are. But it's mm -hmm. kind of awkward. Hi, hi. <laughs> yeah. So this braised pork belly with sweet potato and the spicy diet chicken, something else. We can eat a lot actually. It's lunch. You like uh, the green beans? Yeah, I do. Okay. Oh, okay. She loves green beans. Uh, because it's very difficult to make it. So. Do you want to like eat here? <laughs> I'm gonna eat next to my partner. Okay, great. Uh, you also like uh, eggplants a lot. Uh, no, the I eggplant with the potatoes okay. is very good. And uh, yeah, the rest, uh, what do you recommend? It? Oh, we can eat a lot. Actually, I need to watch my weight. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yesterday, I always, like, uh, my daughter is eight. I always, I, we can I always take her to Alamon Coco, the breakfast places. <laughs> and uh, yesterday, I had the Alamon Coco because it's a pet day for her, Friday. So I took her there. It's like weekend. Then, like, went to the vegetable place, they give the free donuts. I had two free donuts right after. <laughs> it's crazy. Uh, just exercise it away. It'll be fun. Seriously, we don't have time to exercise, though. Every day, I cut a lot of vegetables doing here or there. Oh. Uh, but I think the restaurant and having business make you uh, lose weight, so yeah. you don't have time to eat. Yeah, exactly. But as long as you don't eat late in the night. For me, I when I go home, normally around 10, I arrive home. I always like I my in laws they live with us, yeah. so they always have food. <laughs> so they are they are from Shenyang, China, so they always have food. Like uh, that's very very bad oh, okay. habit. Like on the table, they uh, have one plate or two. I told them <laughs> not, but then after a few days, it showed up again. <laughs> so. Actually, we can have uh, what else? Yeah, I don't like to cook, so I we only eat twice a day. Do we, what do you want to eat? I would like to um, hot and sour soup. Hot and sour Yours soup? Yours is very good. Yeah. That's an American dish, right? Yeah, it's yeah. not a real... Uh, Actually, the first time I tried here, about 14, 15 years, the first time mm -hmm. here, I went to Chinatown for... Actually, a, a local colleague took me there. Like, it's pretty interesting. I like that afterwards, the hot sour soup. And um, this American Chinese food is invented by a New York chef, right? He came up with General Tao chicken. Yeah, and probably I, California. I guess it's California. It, earlier in California. Really? It's amazing invention. General Tao chicken and also the Cantonese fried noodle. And the yeah. wonton as well. Wonton is amazing. It's amazing. Do you, you like the American Chinese food? I Before I opened the restaurant, never had any except the... Like uh, how sour soup is free because it's all like come with free in the buffet <laughs> area, the restaurant. But like um, the wonton soup, they they sell the we use the same like they, they the powder the, the from Costco. Yeah, everywhere like uh, it's the same. It's an invention, so they kind of make it standard already. Yeah, and <laughs> and also Cantonese fried noodle. I guess the the thing noodle we we buy it's a it's a factory here. They sell to us. And it's amazing. You just fry them and then you cook the vegetable or meat and put on top. It's amazing. Okay. It's amazing. It's standardized. Yeah, yeah, that's why they invented it. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's crazy. You know, there's um, Indian, uh, there's American Chinese food, yeah. there's also Indian Chinese food. In India, they try to make Chinese food and they have these uh, dumplings, they call them Manchurians. Oh and they have these uh, Chinese noodles that are quite different. So there's an Indianized version That's of Chinese. Interesting. That would be if you ever travel to India. That would be interesting. It. It's a it's a very popular like food stalls outside. The Manchurians yeah. and the noodles are uh, slightly Indian. It's quite funny. It's like what the Americans did to your food. Yeah, great. Actually, do you want to try the cumin beef? Uh, yeah, I, was I think you tried one time, right? Cumin beef with the onion thing, right? Is the one that's making the tongue spicy, like vibrate? No, not a little one. bit, not this one, not this one. The, the, yeah, it's, I remember a dish that they make my tongue... Uh, that's the <laughs> citron peppercorn. Oh, really? That's the citron peppercorn. It's the, if you say it's not spicy, but it's kind of the numbness, that okay. thing, it's the citron peppercorn. We have the regular peppercorn and the, also the green one. Green citron peppercorn even more potent. Mm, but still not spicy, just the, It's the kind numbing. of the numbness, numbing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so if you recommend this cheese, we should take it. Yeah, yeah. cumin beef. Okay.
Okay, and rice as well, right? Yeah. Sure. Great. Um, just I will be right back. Uh, actually, do you need a soup? How sour soup? Do you do? I'll take one, sure. But are you gonna have one? No, I am trying. <laughs> okay. Watching your weight. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. It will keep keep kind of it will be on, and then I will be back really soon. Oh, okay. yeah, sounds good. Thank you. Oh, what else? Oh, I forget this one. Oh, do you want to cook? Oh, no, I'm going to take my sweater. Ooh, we should move a little bit the chair because they get nothing. Two soup. But, uh, is it in the shot now? Very close to you. So you are you going to your grandma's house after? Uh, yeah, I'm going to see her uh, at two p.m. At 2 p.m. Yeah. But you're gonna drop me off? Yeah. And then go to work? Actually, I, I kind of uh, on the video before, like uh, I learned, like you you came here like when you were 10, right? No, oh, how did you know that? <laughs> you said that on the interview, like. Uh, oh, with uh, Jason? Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, yeah I did. It's a long time ago now. Oh. So. <laughs> Now, because this interview is like uh, mainly about people's stories, so uh, mm -hmm. so that would be a great start to uh, like you started ten, uh, 10 years old. You came with your parents. Yeah, yeah, with uh, my sister and my parents, but uh, the grandparents and uncles and stuff. So oh, the whole family. even earlier. So that your parents. No, no, no. The the grandparents they're in Russia. Okay, this. Yeah, yeah so it's just my parents and my sister. Okay, so they were engineers or. No, no. My uh, they studied uh, finance actually. Uh, so my dad's a businessman, and uh, yeah. And my sister, she was a real estate agent, and okay. now she's helping her husband with his company. Wow, that's amazing! So it looks like uh, had a happy life, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I paint pictures. So <laughs> I'm the odd one out. Actually, the like when the like ten years old, you. T uh, you had went to school here, right? What year? Like yeah, you went yeah. to the United States or something, right? Or uh, all the time here? No, actually, we weren't allowed. Uh, America wasn't letting Russians in at all, like even to visit. Just, Seriously? Yeah. So even, my family, they wouldn't let us visit America just to look at it until we became Canadians and we went with our Canadian passport. Okay. So I haven't been to America until a few years after I arrived to Canada and got my Canadian passport. So America wouldn't let us live there. Uh, so we came to live here. The Cold War ended a like, long time ago, right? <laughs> uh, yeah, but they, they were, I guess they were worried that any Russian that's visiting on vacation is just going to stay there and not leave. Which I do know, I have a friend whose parents actually did exactly that, so they're not completely yeah. wrong. <laughs> but yeah, I, I came here and uh, I, uh, immediately uh, in Russia the education is faster and better yeah exactly uh, like the same, same China yeah China. so I went from grade uh, three yeah. I skipped four and five and I landed in grade six when okay. I got here because okay. the math and all that stuff is faster in Russia okay so you're all high school and the university here yeah yeah which university oh just right over there I did uh, John Molson School of Business which was not useful but um, I completed it and yeah. So you were planning to have a career for business? Not I don't, really. I don't know what I was <laughs> thinking. Uh, the thought was that I'm supposed to be an artist, but I'll but, do it later or something. But when did you, because from that Jason's interview, I, I learned like uh, at the year of 23 or 24 years old, you were picked by Time magazine yes. to have the... People of the year, the yeah, poetry, was right? six months after I tried to be an artist. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you mentioned that's that's crazy. <laughs> it is. But, I actually couldn't believe it. I thought. But it was since scary. when you 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 knew like uh, you had some kind of a gift in uh, painting? Or, I don't. Uh, I tried to paint, but uh, I did not make any of that. <laughs> well, probably same for me. No, I I've never 
encountered that I have a gift, but I've just practiced more than other humans at this particular thing. But what year? Like, uh, uh, how old were you? All, all my life, I've uh, liked art and drawing. Really? Life, ever since I can remember. I don't have a very good memory for when I was a kid, but any moment that I remember being alive, I liked it. I need to with I need to check my daughter like she's like this or not. <laughs> we need to see. Okay. Oh, I thought like Thank uh, you so much. Um, so you 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 kind of into the art like when you were very very young. So extremely. Yeah, even in Russia, when I was a kid, uh, I was always drawing monsters and things like that. <laughs> so it's not a talent. It's um, I think some humans have more of a chemical response to doing a certain thing than other kids do. Yeah. Like let's say most kids they like sports. So okay. when they but do your so parents they were not like uh, in art, right? Your parents? No, absolutely not. They were in like accounting and like. Mm. But your mama like art because she always she, brings she you does, to the museum uh, when you were a kid. Yeah, she took me yeah. to many museums uh, in, when we lived in Europe, all over Europe. I was lucky. That's to amazing. See all those. Yeah. So that's kind of a natural, very natural. It's like like before the like Time Magazine thing. You were not trained in art, right? You were not not yeah. like a formally trained. I, I was self. I was just doing everything by myself, and uh, I thought. Um, I didn't realize, because I was young, I didn't realize that you need training and you need to train consciously. I was just thought, oh, I'm just going to draw my monsters and I'll just become the best artist in the world, just like doing it. And it's only when I was 23 where I went to the atelier and I took a methodical yeah. approach to it. Oh, it's math okay, that's like in I, LA. I went to Atelier to study under somebody okay, and okay. actually learn stuff. Before that, I was. But how did you make I your name at twenty three? How? But you have to be. Uh, you have to be like uh, known in the circle to know. Okay, this guy is pretty good at this painting. So the time well, magazine could. I was pretty of... good at digital painting. I started digitally painting when I was twelve. So mm -hmm. by by the time I was twenty three, mm -hmm. I've. Well, but like I said, without any like nobody was teaching me. I didn't mm -hmm. know what I was doing. I was just doing myself as a okay. fun thing so people kind of knew me a little bit from digital painting the digital painting is weird how do you do that you thing? have a screen and you have an electronic mm -hmm. pen and uh, it was very cute because at the time I thought that digital painting is going to be like the same thing as oil painting is uh, and because I'm good at digital painting I'm just going to be amazing at oil painting and I found out it's not the same it's it was quite a quite a shock yeah. okay you can uh, I need to spend some time to drink. For these soups, there is um, a gelatin that they put in here to make this. Uh, no, that's the, that's the one that uh, potato starch. Potato starch. Yeah, oh, we have a we, bag of that. Yeah, yeah we do. There's so two we kinds of starch we use. It's uh, mm -hmm. the corn starch and the potato starch. I don't know which one for which. No, but uh, I thought it was a, some sort of pork uh, yeah, me too. bone. No, Jelly not at all. No, or something like mm -hmm. that. So it's not very healthy. Not at all. It's just kind of starch. Actually, it's gluten free. Oh really? Yeah, the know. starch is. Uh, but potatoes are gluten. No. Yeah. Uh, yeah the, potatoes gluten? No, the, the 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 wet is the uh, the gluten. Wheat. Oh, wheat. The wheat. wheat sorry, wheat. Yeah, yeah. Wet. My my English always have that. <laughs> Same. <laughs> But when when did you guys meet? Three or four years yeah. in two thousand seventeen, eighteen, seventeen. Mm -hmm. I think you speak answer. you speak French here. Yeah. Not much. When he arrived <laughs> here in Canada, he speak very well French. My French was better than my English. Okay. Um, but I went to an English school. And yeah. it was over. So you lost everything. Really? Terrible. I'm, I'm fine. Now. Yeah, French should be fine. Now, I think. <laughs> I may not have French, but I haven't lost but anything. I'm fine. <laughs> like both of us, uh, he didn't well talk well French, and yeah. I didn't talk well English. Yeah. So one of them has to communicate to each other. It's so it. I improved my English. Yeah, it's but even he better. Didn't. Her English improved uh, dramatically, but yeah. Um, yeah. which is very useful for when we travel and yeah. for English is amazing. Actually, everywhere they use it everywhere. I, I spent a lot of years, more than ten years, like. Uh, Learning English here. Mm -hmm. I spent a lot of time learning. It's amazing.
Yeah, right. I don't see the sense in French. It's not one of the more important languages. Um, English, Chinese, Spanish are more important just because there's more but, people. That but speak French here is very, 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 very important in Montreal, Quebec. Mm. I don't know. I was, uh, when and you're self-employed, you don't talk to anybody anyway. So just for, the, for the restaurant business, if like uh, if some sign or the menu is not in French, they oh, can yeah. they can give us a ticket. Yeah, yeah it's true. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. That's a uh, cumin beef. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Welcome. I have a like a, I have a friend who who designed the logo. This logo designed by a, he's thirty something already. Like uh, I met him like more than ten years ago. He's great. That, that time he always has the the stylist something always drawing on the computer. Mm -hmm. That's ten years ago. He did that thing. He's amazing. Uh, th this logo? Yeah. Is this your? It's a it's a real yeah. My friend's mom. It's not related, but it's my friend's dad. Oh, because so in now, China, everybody calls everybody aunt. Exactly, uncle. I've oh. got an aunt. Like uh, my friend, her her family name is Dai. So her mom visit her. Like uh, she lives here. Mm -hmm. She and her husband and a child, and they live here in the West Island. So her mom, twelve, thirteen years ago, came visit, yeah. making the cooking for the family. Like I went there, like it was shocked. Yeah. Like so, uh, the, her cooking? Yeah, it's the we call the chen chen bing, uh, three layers bread. So it's like a thin bread. Mm. It's like uh, you kind of make layers by folding them many many times. Mm. And she was, she did that a lot for us. So it was really amazing. So I, that time I told her like one day if I really bored, and I open restaurant use your name. She said yes, and uh, that's her real picture. <laughs> Did you ask her for her recipes or these uh, your recipes? No, that that one I could make it even today. I she taught me several times. Like I went to her place like uh, several times. So after that, I kind of pretty good at that thing. But right now, I forget already. I guess mm -hmm. it just takes time. It's not realistic for a restaurant to do that though. It's kind of taking a lot of time. And to they, do the the real uh, Chinese yeah, cooking. Yeah, yeah, real the the, the that thing bread. It's kind of you have to, they put a, like hot water and yeast as well, and then some time, and you need to fold them so many times and uh, pan fry them. It's, a, it's amazing. Mm. Mm. Oh, I it's, yeah, it's not realistic to, uh, it, restaurant business has to be fast. You have to, especially the rush hours. It's, uh, either you have no customer, either you have Sometimes you have too many customers you cannot handle. Okay, this one. Okay. Ah, thank you. Mm. Oh, isn't great. Yeah. So would you say that in order to try the really authentic Chinese cooking, you, you have to do it in a family? I think so, yeah. I, I almost... Most like uh, Chinese cooking at home will be better than the restaurant. Most e of the time. But even in China? Even China, yeah. Because oh. every restaurant you have, it's, it's a business you have to write like, uh, like if you have 10 tables, they all seated. Five tables, like you have, we have the order there. You mm -hmm. cannot be slow. You, yeah. you, if you kind of cook one for five minutes, 10 minutes, then like if you do the calculation, it will be uh, impossible. The, pitch, the the customer will be really mad. So then we've never tried um, real Chinese food. No. I've been to China, at least she hasn't, but I guess yeah. still haven't tried. But your grandma can uh, do she it. She doesn't know. She doesn't know? No, even she owned uh, a restaurant before. She so there's restaurant cuisine and then there's home cuisine. It's not the yeah. same thing. Um, same. To, be, to be honest, if you want to have a, a real kind of a... Chinese, very, very good Chinese food, mm -hmm. real, real tra traditional and a really great quality. You have to be very small. The restaurant yeah. has to be very, very small to oh, focus yeah. on only two or three, four items. Oh, I see. I see. Yeah, it's like, uh, but if you want to survive as a business, you have to sell it very high price. So that makes it extremely hard to survive. 
So it's contradicting. So there are two things. Either you, you do it slowly or you do it fast uh, to be more efficient. You mean because people expect Chinese food to be cheaper so you feel like you can't take a long time to make it because then you have to raise the price and the humans it's, don't expect that. Yeah, because like uh, I guess over time the the existing overwhelming Chinese restaurant business already being like low price and then fast and get get the flavor but so if you if you price a little bit high or 20 30 percent higher so they will question what is the worth you know it's, it's unfortunate it's yeah. like art in Canada it's all uh, cheap here you exactly know, I give my price they're like uh. I, I saw one <laughs> of your paint on the online like the the one with the sword the it's a Middle East somewhere like uh, oh that one is amazing the the you can see the yeah detail that that kind of the counter Contrasting, it's amazing. So. That's the founder of the country, Bahrain, and uh, their prince. He had me uh, paint him from an old black and white historical photo. This very blurry photo, you can't see anything. So him and I, we worked over Instagram actually. To, he researched um, real swords, like yeah. he went to auction, found a real sword. Because in the photo, you can't see anything. It's like okay. ten pixels. So we found like the correct garments, the correct swords, yeah. and I painted them into the blurry photo, That's oh, from scratch, yeah. um, to make that kind of painting where it looks like it was in full color. Yeah. And then. It's amazing that you guys use the color, it's amazing. I get one picture with her inside, yeah. the, the hair that's kind uh, of behind. That, blow. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's kind of crazy. How do you so bright? Like the like a sun behind. It looks like a yeah. There's a lamp behind her. Yeah. <laughs> but like it, he was in the mood to make yeah. this painting, so yeah. he had like the technique and the yeah. idea to yeah. do it. Yeah, that was a very lucky painting. painting. There's actually a time lapse of it on YouTube. It's like 50 yeah. seconds, and it was yeah. one of the most lucky paintings where I just made no mistakes at all. Yeah. He did on four hours. You did right. And four uh, five, I believe. Five. I think this, this business is really uh, when people choose art or doing the painting, it's really risky as well. And then, well, that's why it took so long. That's why I studied business like an idiot at this the idiot school. There. <laughs> uh, which is, by the way, it's a waste of time, even if you want to do business. Mm -hmm. To be honest, like uh, I, I don't think I got anything out of that school except uh, my uh, classes with God Saad. He's an evolutionary psychologist. Mm -hmm. He has a great podcast too, actually. I think right now people have the luxury to be an artist. Before, like uh, I guess several 50, 60 years ago, people were still starving, so they need to have the food, like uh, to make sure, like it have an okay life. Right now, even especially in Canada, you don't have to. So it's your expectation if you. It gives you longer time to be patient, to to wait for something. You can achieve something. You know, it's you're not you're not no, worried. I wasn't very patient. <laughs> you, you are not. You I guess you kind of um, you at your age super young and then like achieve so much. It, That's it takes amazing. a long time for a lot of people. So when you go to become an artist, you should. Yeah. Um, I saved a lot of money. I worked yeah. in marketing yeah. for two yeah. years. Uh, yeah. Big waste of time. Except yeah. I uh, saved the money that I used to go to California yeah. and I spent all of it learning oil painting. Uh, so if you have that uh, savings, you, you want to uh, some, some? No, thank you. Okay, thank you so much. It's a little bit too early. <laughs> too early. Too early. Okay, welcome. Cheers. 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 It's okay. <laughs> Actually, I'm really surprised as a Russian you don't drink like Chinese liquor. <laughs> oh, I'm scared. Fifty-three percent. That's it's just burning. Actually, oh, that's, but that's a lot. A lot of Russians they can drink vodka like water or something. Really? Yeah, they do. But not him. <laughs> yeah, no, not I, this one. I drink little hipster beers and stuff that okay. are like oh, that, guava flavor. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's like crazy beer. Tea flavor, yeah. uh, like girly little yeah. beers, you know. But I like sake. Actually, for the wine, I I really don't like the wine, the dry, the flavor dry. I mm -hmm. I like the rose Jose. Yeah, <laughs> like Jose is, and the, sweet. It's yeah, exactly. Sweet. Like the girly one. Yeah, so. and also Jose, good. Also the ice wine, super sweet, mm -hmm. and the porté as well. Oh, thank you. Uh, Porto. Like yeah, Porto. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we love Porto. Twenty percent. 
right? It's amazing, Su super sweet. Oh, I love Porto, it's so good. Yeah. We were gonna go to Portugal and go to the place Porto, but then COVID uh, canceled it. We still have to go. Thank you, Maria. Thank you. Um, but I'm, I'm curious, what made you start uh, a restaurant? Uh, that's a mistake. Because <laughs> restaurants are, because you say, oh, being an artist is uh, risky, which it, it's 99.9% .9 of artists will fail, definitely. Mm. I am not one of those, the rest will, but um, restaurants are actually kind of similar. Where it's it's similar. Not, you, they usually fail within less than a year. Less than a year, yeah. So it's quite brave of you. So what motivated you to be so brave? It's uh, at the beginning, I... Because when I came here, I work as an IT engineer all the time. So I was, uh, I had a IT job. I worked for two companies so far. The first company I worked for two years. The second company, the American company, I worked for twelve years. Mm -hmm. Would you like some? Uh, no, it's fine. I, I can, yeah. The, so the second company I worked for twelve years. I was just laid off uh, during the pandemic. I guess because during the pandemic, yeah, but during, you had this restaurant before the pandemic. Yeah, I had eight years, so seven years mm -hmm. was in parallel. So it was my side job to have this restaurant. It's having a restaurant is this can be a side job. It's oh, but uh, that's, I, I was it's a big a big uh, side job. Yeah, <laughs> it's uh, that's why we were not doing that well though. Even but like during the pandemic, I was laid off end of April two thousand twenty. So that gave me a lot of time to fully in the restaurant. So I right now after a year and a half, all the full time in restaurant, I know this restaurant a lot better. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. So we the the chances to fail mm -hmm. is getting much smaller. Before even all the time I was debating within myself I should have I should have given up the restaurant business. I was all the time I was debating. Yeah. It's not. Uh, it's a tough business because even if your food is great, if the marketing is off, like um, I have a friend, he worked at Michelin starred restaurants. Um, the Fat Duck in England is, was the second best restaurant on the planet at the time. Okay. So he was highly skilled in molecular cuisine and things like that. But he opened a restaurant here. He did no marketing. And I was the only person going there, and the food was like nothing Montreal has had because it was all like scientifically cooked and um, very unique. But he didn't do any promotion. He died within six months. Uh, it was very sad. It's really tough. It the is. problem is like that's why I said it's a mistake for me. I don't know cooking. Even today, I don't know how to cook. Really? I, yeah, I had the idea. That's the. I was a. Uh, like kind of a romantic person. I had a one idea, I tried to do it. That's kind of naive, to be honest. It's naive and kind of stupid. So, uh, because on that, kind of inspired me to, I was thinking, why the Chinese food was so amazing, and then why don't we have so many good, good Chinese restaurants? So I was thinking, I'm an IT engineer, I could have new idea through the management, through some focus on some area to make it like a really good restaurant. Mm. So I didn't know how to cook. So I I post uh, looking on the Chinese internet, mm -hmm. internet community. So looking for like a chef. Mm -hmm. Actually, I was lucky to find people. Like uh, I just talked to them to buy the idea to say like uh, let's focus on the quality and the service. You guys take up the quality of the kitchen. I take up the services in the front. My wife also worked like five days in the uh, in the front as a waitress, mm -hmm. and also I th all through internet I found another waitress. She's kind of Chinese, but mm -hmm. she's kind of professional waitress. You don't see them many like professional waitresses all the time. Dedicated waitresses in Montreal, especially Chinese. Yeah, she uh, her name is Sophie, and she's really good. Like uh, she uh, she's. Interesting. She immigrated here like a little bit around the same time, I guess. She spent a lot of time learning French. She found a, like a husband, like Quebecois husband. Oh, really? <laughs> and uh, so her French so was her good. French. Yeah, yeah. yeah, her <laughs> French was great, and English was good as well. So at the beginning, like in the Cotton Edge, we have small restaurant, only forty six, very small. So at, when we started, we knew nothing. 
and the name is new, menu is new, mm -hmm. and we had no customer at the beginning. Mm. But but it's small. The rent was low, so helped us survive. The first month we lost at least five, nine thousand dollars. First month only. That's not only. bad. That's yeah. how much I lost yesterday in stocks <laughs> per day. <laughs> <laughs> but but I <laughs> but I did not have service, the savings because I was working full time IT job. So a little mm. bit of saving, I we took the loan from the it's home line credit from mm -hmm. the the Royal Bank. Mm -hmm. So it's everything we took the loan for the because it's small. The initial investment was not big. So, mm -hmm. but like any extra loss were caused me crazy. Like because yeah. I I rely we rely on the paychecks from the company. Uh. So first month I saw there's no business and then crazy. But like over the time is small. The cost overall cost not big. So Sophie was great and the kitchen was doing. Fine. Yeah. So it kind of slowly, slowly take us six months to find to to see we have a little bit a big customer base. Mm. But how did you have time to do that while you had a full like I just can't imagine. I just how can't, that's like uh, after work I came to the restaurant. I actually that's why I was kind of naive, too naive. I thought was that time our daughter was only one year old, mm -hmm. like with a with a young baby. That's fine. Yeah. So yeah, you have a baby, uh, yeah, a job, well, and it's exactly. time to start a restaurant. <laughs> when we look, when I look back, it's kind of, it's kind of a uh, naive. I was really naive. It's it's kind of. I think it's romantic thinking. I always like if I believe one thing, I always go do it. But and it's then, good because you have to have that to like to become an artist. You have to be an idiot to yeah. try that. It's but similar. it can work. Yeah. You might be yeah. the idiot that makes it work. That's why it's I always possible. always like art. I I was not trained. I had nothing related to artists. But I always think my inside maybe I'm an artist as well. Because when I I grew up in a village, so we had nothing so poor like uh, we. Had, like we literally play with mud. Like mm. uh, I did not have any single toy in my whole life. Oh. So I had no talent. I did not. I was not doing anything. No music. No nothing. So the music to me is very very tough. It's like uh, when I try to sing the popular songs, mm -hmm. the people will say you are off the tone like crazy because for them they have seven tones. For me only have because we have less than five. <laughs> <laughs> so for me. It's, I just simply cannot tell the difference on the mm -hmm. on the tones, and uh, in your own language, you mean? Yeah, even the music education we did not have that in the primary school, and the first time in the junior high school, and we had the music class, I guess, and then I thought was the do re mi fa sol. It's just the sound is different. If you want to higher, you just make it louder. <laughs> <laughs> That's only, I guess, only ten years ago. My wife corrected me. Like my wife realized, like, Rami Fasola Shido, like something you said that way. <laughs> it's it's like only ten years ago. Like realized, like uh, because the education was so bad. Mm. You no, know, it's a. Uh, well, which uh, city or village are you from? Uh, I'm from Jiangsu, but it's a small village. And so, they, their school was not good. School is in the village. Mm. Well, some days we went barefoot. Without shoes, really? Yeah, yeah. Oh. Is it hard for? No, like, oh, I was born in seventy nine, so that's that's a yeah, that's the seventy nine. It's the whole China was not opening up yet, so yeah. it's mm -hmm. it's just the very beginning of that movement, the reform opening up of the country. So I went to, so the first several years, ninety one, I believe, nine year nineteen ninety one, I went to the. The junior high school, the grade one of the junior high school. That that time, we still don't see too much the industries, that kind of commercial goods in the countryside. Mm -hmm. Only 1997, uh, that was the the first year I went to a big city like Tianjin University, Tianjin City. So that first time, 1997, I, the first time I see a real city. And was was there an opportunity for you? Uh, from the village high school to get to a really good university was that possibility very there, very or? rare that's why i'm so lucky i'm the whole village in the history i'm the first one to ever go to university the whole village so that time it's because the education in the village was so bad that those kids are not likely to score well enough we, to get we, to we, a university we, we play with all these crazy things and we fought with within us with teachers <laughs> like mm -hmm. so we kind of kind of you know it's a 
But that time, 1980s, 1990s, uh, we had the, uh, in Jiangsu province, Jiangsu province is a really good province, the economy is number two in the whole China. So 1990, beginning of 1990, they called uh, like a uh, factory, they make uh, furniture mm. in those cities. So for the young people, like you are 15, 16 years old, you drop off school right, right away. Like to, after, to, work, in the to work in the factory. Yeah. Oh. So it's, uh, after junior high school, so you are, I was uh, 15. So normally when you finish 15, you always go to a factory. Because you you skip university usually even but, uh, sk even skip the the senior high school. But I, I thought that now the the kids are they find it extremely important to uh, get into a good university and families spend most of their income on these uh, education, education yeah, exactly. companies that just got destroyed. Yeah, uh, exactly. So uh, so now there's like a huge pressure for kids to. Uh, Compete the, with each other. Yeah, the problem right today, like uh, 1997, I started the university, but right after we have we call Gaokao the national exam, that system national exam, but after that like 1997, out my year that year, it's kind of tough to get to university. But after that, every year they expand 30 percent. So they increase thirty percent of the how many kids can yeah go? to go to the university. So yeah. more and more people went to the universities mm -hmm. after nineteen ninety seven, okay. and it, yeah, it's great. But the problem is, like after you graduate, you may not have a job. You may not have a good job. So because really? of, we have a lot more graduates, too yeah, too many, many. Even today, they have probably eight million. Eight million? Yeah, eight million grad every year graduate from university. So. And they don't have a job. They don't uh, have some of them, they can. It, that's why you have to compete with the uh, universities. Oh. If you are coming from Tsinghua University or Beijing University, you, you are guaranteed because you generally, like uh, the chosen few, mm. they know you are from good school like oh. Harvard. So you, if you don't get in a good university, you you won't be able to get a job from your university. So exactly. you have to like Canada and get a job here. Or something like that. <laughs> no, it's even tough. <laughs> you have to have experience, everything. Oh, it's fine. It's it's not easy now. The young young people, it, right now the it may not be hundred percent true, but the young people right now they are more relying on their parents than before. Because if your parents from a big city, you have mm -hmm. properties and you have savings, and uh, they will help the young people. It's mm -hmm. If if you from nowhere, no background, in mm -hmm. even you come graduate from university. The job, the salary, really bad. Oh, yeah, today. That's sad. It's been several years like that because the competition is so much, so big. That's why the economy. If you don't grow the economy like a certain eight percent or six percent least, you just do not. You don't create so many extra jobs for the new students out well, of the campus. But that, that's why China was yeah. building so many uh, real estate buildings because it employed uh, people. In exactly. Construction. Yeah. Exactly. Um, Everything has to be investment. You have to have a lot of jobs. But that means that in China, you're incentivized to be an entrepreneur because the jobs don't pay you much. Uh, but it seems like when you're an entrepreneur in China, it actually can work out extremely well. Uh, the real, real estate developers, they're doing re extremely well, but not oh, this year. No, not anymore. No, not anymore. <laughs> that, that, was, uh, that was last yeah. year. Yeah. Now they're doing yeah. really not well. By the, they say, by like average household, they have 1.5 units already. Oh, right? really? Yeah, yeah. So oh. every family, by average step by step, you have more than like 1.5 units already. But so it means like a 50% almost extra. Okay. What's amazing is that in China, some cities, they have the highest... Um, yearly salary per real estate cost uh, ratio ever so in beijing it's 47 years yeah. of the average so, pay I heard and something. people still that yeah. somehow can buy it um, parents you have rich parents with only young people like uh, um I, i'm worried that this uh, real estate obsession is uh, coming to an end because the society can't Pay forty-seven years of your exactly. Pay. It has to come yeah. down. Exactly. It so, uh, but it's like a investment. You always want to go up. You don't want to go down. <laughs> That's the problem. Mm -hmm.
And when did you come to Canada? Um, 19, oh no, 2006, 2006. 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, oh, what made you come here? Yeah, Before, it's cool. Yeah. Before that, I was the first job. I worked in Huawei, so the big company, the first job they sent me to overseas. I was on business, so I went to Egypt. It's uh, Cairo. I stayed there six months in Cairo. Wow. Yeah, and um, Istanbul, Ankara, the Turkey. I spent two weeks there. It's amazing. I saw the the Blue Mosque, the the famous one. Yeah. Istanbul, yeah. yeah. And also, I I two trips to London, totally eight months, and four months in Brazil, Rio de Janeiro. So this is with Huawei. Yeah, yeah. So they, they paid us really well. And then they even pay you to work in certain country. Like uh, one time, like Rio de Janeiro is really amazing. Mm -hmm. Rio de Janeiro is, the whole city is really amazing. I stayed there for a month. And also like um, United States, everywhere, Hong Kong. I worked in Hong Kong for six months. Mm -hmm. I live in Shenzhen nice. and then in, that's why I'm kind of lucky to have a chance to see different world. Yeah. So my my mind was changed, open up my ideas to see. That's why I say like if I know English, I I can see a lot of information. I can see the world very differently. Mm -hmm. So, so we don't need French. Yeah. And <laughs> and recently in the pandemic, I listened a lot of podcasts from United States. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. I because when I work in the in the kitchen or like cutting vegetables, I always listen on the airport. Okay. On the airport, I always listen to some great uh, podcasts. Like mm -hmm. uh, that's why the start this little podcast is the same idea I learned from United States to say like talk to people and uh, to uh -huh. tell stories. What do you look for in your guests? How do you pick them? It's just like uh, I like I saw her like um, like uh, Instagram is really amazing standing out because <laughs> I I thought you were Chinese like because like. Uh, for Chinese, um, yeah, yeah, I, um, yeah. My DNA said I'm uh, 98, 99 percent. Yeah, 97. You did, you did that yeah. test? Yeah, I did a test. Really, uh, DNA test? Uh, I bought her yeah. one. Really? Yeah, she yeah. was 97 and then there was Korean was the rest. Yeah. Korean? Yeah, a little bit. But we thought Chinese also Mongolians, right? Uh -huh. uh, I'm not sure, I have to check on yeah. my, yeah. yeah. Probably a Russians do have a lot of Mongolians. Mongolia, yeah. yeah, came to Russia yeah. and invaded them. Yeah, invaded. Yeah. Sadly, I didn't. I wanted to have DNA from Genghis Khan. But, uh, <laughs> Genghis. but Genghis Khan killed a lot of people. It's a. Uh, it's serious. It's blood, brutal. And nobody yeah, even criticizing him. People, but he. Uh, He's he, the greatest he uh, conqueror, right? Uh, uh, look, at the time in history, the way the way to win was. Through doing yeah. that, and yeah. at the time that he existed, he was the biggest winner yeah. of all things. Yeah. So I respect him. I wouldn't invade half the world today, but, but I respect his victory. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's the, <laughs> that makes that, sense. That's a narrative I I heard one time only. I all in Chinese in China always people admire Genghis Khan because they call oh, Chen really? Khan. Yeah, in China because it's the Yuan Dynasty, the Genghis Khan conquered the whole China. Change the name. It's technologically much more advanced, higher yeah. population, yeah. and he did it with just people that were disorganized on some yeah. horses, yeah. and he won. How yeah. do you not respect? Yeah, them? exactly. But the the they, they say like one narrative saying like uh, why people not like like uh, cruelty from him not criticizing, but they are criticizing Stalin and Hitler. Stalin and Hitler were cruel. They were criticized a lot, right? Yeah. yeah. But like probably Chung is kind of a little bit worse than them what what he did. It was pretty yeah. bad. Yeah, pretty <laughs> bad. They they go to a city, go to a castle saying like if you don't surrender, when I take this one, everybody's gonna be killed. So that's the threat. Every time he gave the warning. If yeah. you don't come to surrender and for sure we will conquer you and then we'll leave nobody died. we we'll, we'll we'll spare nobody. Yeah, they they, they did that. Yeah. yeah. That's crazy. And <laughs> But in China, it's re respected like crazy as well. Really respect because that's interesting because China was defeated by yeah by him, Genghis, so I yeah, thought by his grandson who be could be late by his grandson. So, mm -hmm. but his grandson like the Chinese culture. Somehow they use our system, Chinese dynasty system, 
to rule that part of the his territory. Well, that's what was interesting about yeah. Genghis Khan is that his empire yeah. he let yeah. people keep their culture yeah. and he learned from every culture yeah. and from the technology yeah. and things like that. And he incorporated yeah. it into his own, yeah. which is why it worked for some time because he. He let people, unlike the Romans, which forced everybody to be Roman, Genghis Khan let people be in, in China, the whole history, the the Mongolians, they conquered a China called Yuan Dynasty, but only last one, 100 years, about 100 years. The mm -hmm. Han Dynasty, Han people, they always rebel because they don't think, oh, it's a, it's a foreign barbarians. Mm -hmm. So they kind of, in, intellectuals or some people, they organized army to kind of, they, they drove out the Mongolians, like uh, after 100 years. The next time will be Montoria. Montoria is the, is the last dynasty called Qing. So that, they were so smart to adapt. So they ruled the China for 400 years. Yeah, so dynasty Qing, 400 years, until the British and the French <laughs> like, uh, came to invade China. The French came to invasion. Yeah. I didn't know that. That's the Opium War. The first Opium I didn't War know was the French were involved in that. That's the second Opium, the ni 1860. They, because as a Chinese, we see that like a century of humiliation. Yeah. So that's like 1840 is the British only. So British came to China to have the Opium War. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So Dynasty Qing was kind of they saw the, the the superpower of the weapons. So they kind of shocked. So they kind of signed the treaty to give up a lot of rights or the money and uh, the second time was French and English together so 1860. So the, the Opium War they were fighting for the right to sell to Chinese sell people drugs yeah. which the Chinese government said you're not allowed to sell exactly. drugs and yeah. England said we're gonna sell you yeah. drugs. Anyway if you don't agree we kind of beat you guys. <laughs> That's terrible. That's a you know empty. Oh, thank you. Um, yeah, Mongolians had Russia for 200 years and were the only people to ever successfully defeat Russia in any battle. Yeah, um, yeah so because Laponin tried, Hitler tried, they all failed, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah but so, Genghis Khan didn't, which is why I wanted some of his DNA, but um, <laughs> I don't know if I got it. Mine was a surprise. I thought I would be just a boring, uh, just 100% Russian, but uh, it was all mixed up. No. It was all over. Yeah, the people the kind of they fought this war that who win, somebody won, somebody lost. Yeah, the back to I th you on the on the Instagram I saw yeah. like that's why like for a lot of especially right now the Chinese people Chinese because they they don't do models don't very rare. They don't, they do, don't yeah. do modeling. Yeah, modeling oh, yeah. very rare in the Chinese because I I don't know because a lot of they like some career. First of all, the parents they like the stable careers. Mm -hmm. That's why the art, oh, this, yeah, yeah, they want to have business schools <laughs> like a Concordia business school, yeah, I don't or, or some like lawyers, like mm -hmm. uh, doctors. Stable, you know, the stable. Mm -hmm. The parents want the, I don't know, it's less risky, so they want plan the whole life, yeah. a lot for their kids. For example, you are eighteen, you are. 16 they always choose uh, but that's such a bad strategy like yeah. uh, not just for fun and happiness but let's say everybody and cheers by the way cheers kind of cheers, cheers. <laughs> everybody's parents Indian yeah. parents Asian parents they want lawyer doctors so the competition yeah. for lawyer and doctor is extremely high exactly that's my yeah. theory you it, need to do the something they if you do something you really have. like that less people do but you seriously, like, most artists will fail 99.9%, but if you do it really well, you're going to be one of the very few humans on yeah. this planet that can do it at that level, and people are going to pay you money for that. Yeah. You just have to make sure to do it. It's actually, like, for me, I think becoming an outstanding lawyer that is above all others, when you, you don't to, even right? like law... It's going to be a lot harder yeah. than you becoming a fantastic swimmer or whatever you like or ballet dancer because the competition is less. Your interest in it makes you more likely to practice and become outstanding. A lawyer, you don't even want to be a lawyer. You're not going to practice. There's going to be other people that are going to practice more. You're going to lose. And also for lawyers, you have some, you, you know it's wrong, but you have to defend the wrong. I don't know how they do that. Yeah. Yeah. You know this guy killed somebody. 
Yeah, like the O.J. Simpson uh, yeah. lawyer. Um, I don't. I don't know how they do that. That's really disgusting. That's, yeah. But that's their principles. The principles. I. I. I actually, I like that principle. Even you. Everybody have a, has a voice to, yeah. to fight over. You know, yeah. even you are guilty, but you have to. You know, both sides they have enough time, enough chances to show the evidence, so to have the arguments. So it's like a, a freedom ideas, uh, the free market of ideas. Like when you have a lot of ideas, maybe your idea is a little bit better than the other one. But you have to go through a lot of contests, a lot of exchanges to see, okay, let the other people judge to see, oh, this guy maybe really has some point. That guy is kind of crazy idea, you know. I don't know how he was able to win. I like the free marketplace of ideas, but the problem is in a free marketplace of ideas, it's not the best idea that always wins, yeah. unfortunately. Uh, and definitely not in recent history. It does not seem to me that the free marketplace of ideas makes the best ideas come to the top. But I don't know if I'm suggest what I'm suggesting is yeah. tyranny. Or yeah, whatever. exactly. I'm not sure what but the solution is. But there's, they, they always say there's no bad alternative. This one is not good, but you don't have a better system because humans like uh, selfish by nature. You always want to, you know, as a baby, you always grab the candies. You know, <laughs> it's it's selfish by nature. It's not pretty. Yeah. So you have have a system to balance it out, but the result. Is, may not be perfect at all. Even today, like you see a lot of problems, but uh, it's not the worst, you know. As long as it's not the worst, it's better. No, the world is better than it's ever been. Yeah. Um, on every statistical measure, health, crime, wealth, everything is better. Even though people complain, yeah. they say oh, everything's so bad, but it's actually fantastic. And the opportunities that we have are. Uh, better than ever. Before. Yeah, exactly. They may come an end though. <laughs> come to an end. It's very risky right now. Because everything is like uh, like this supply chain thing and the viral thing. And it's kind of making the like the, the balance is tipping sometimes. You don't see before like two years ago everybody was having a good time. Mm -hmm. And you find you can plan your education, you can plan your career. But right now everything is is crazy and then like even the inflation, if you make a, a income like a five thousand a dollar, like not changing, but like the the inflation make it much less. Yeah, you're you're about six point two percent less yeah. in America. Yeah. In Canada, I'm not sure what it is. Probably even worse. America. Yeah, probably even worse. So yeah, that leaves a situation yeah. where in America or in Canada, you have to invest in such a way that even if you make six point two percent, you've have zero more new buying power. So yeah. just to keep your buying power, you have to grow your wealth by yeah. six point two. And also, the inflation will hurt the poor people more than you know. Which is funny because uh, they make little articles uh, how inflation is good for you, and it's not that's, good. That's for stupid. That I haven't read any. Inflation is yeah. good for wealthier people yeah. because they own uh, real estate yeah. and stocks. Yeah. Which go up unless other, you own the stocks that yeah, I own, then they go down. But <laughs> in other people's stocks, they go up. Yeah. Real estate goes up. Uh, poor people, unfortunately, they need that money. Yeah, exactly. So it's uh, very difficult for them. But there's still a lot of opportunity in every crisis. Mm -hmm. If you navigate it correctly, you can benefit from it. Yeah. If you think about it the right way, though. But right now, you will see the the conflict everywhere, like between China, U.S. is everywhere. Well, it's also inside U.S. and inside countries. Yeah. People are fighting between who's vaccinated or not, and there's a big division. Even Canada, between. right? So peaceful. It's still well, well, less than America. Still, still better than America. Yeah, but uh, it's more aggressive than uh, it's been before. Um, so it seems like the humans are <laughs> fighting between each other yeah. a little bit. But it's a moment in history and it will pass and uh, things will be fine again. Yeah, it will be a flip and then if you zoom out, it will be a flat line. <laughs> you don't see that little you know, wave. Yeah, so it's not going to be a big deal. You just have to make sure your business survives.
Because if you survive, you're going to be fine. Yeah. So for our strategy, <laughs> seriously, we have this like kind of like debating or whatever me and my wife to see right now it's the restaurant business it's really crazy <laughs> crazy in a difficult bad way or in a positive way it's, it's bad way because the the one thing is i explained the commission for the takeout for the deliveries is the profit margin is low like crazy mm. and also the because make it supply chain problems yeah, yeah the cost of food your meat is up 30 percent i guess so because in America, I mean, I don't know anything about Canada. I don't read about Canada, but it's the chicken, you could be up 30% yeah, pork, on your yeah. And the vegetables. And also the problem is the labor market is totally unbalanced right now. The labor market, you cannot find people. Well, yeah, why? I don't understand this. Uh, nobody wants to work on this planet anymore. Yeah. And I don't understand what has changed. Like, you still need to work. Like, why is working not a thing we want to do? Anymore? It's uh, I mean, okay, I haven't had a job in uh, it's eight years, but for, I don't need one. Yeah, for you, it's... Uh, <laughs> I, I, I work every day. I'm happy. <laughs> but It's the... Enjoy. From March 2020, the, the government is paying people to stay at home. No, but they, they're not they, anymore. They're not anymore. No, but they ended only in October. But people, some smart people, they can still claim the ERA, the insur employment insurance. You know, there's still there's a way to to kind of navigate. If you want to take advantage of the system, some people they found like through, they said I cannot work, I lost job. But seriously, you are not looking. People asking you to work, you are not going. Yeah, that's, that's ridiculous. This is every restaurant yeah. has a need work signed at any. A hundred percent of yeah. every restaurant has yeah. a sign like that. The market is crazy. Yeah. The demand for products is yeah. higher than it's ever been. People need to work. It, it's the balance. Be before it's balanced, so you have so many people need a job. So many people, company they need find people. So now everybody knows like company. Can less people working so even you are looking for a job you know that you have advantage already mm. so making it like more you know is that the, that balance take a long time it takes 18 months to break it and it take maybe a little bit longer to bring it back because you think it's gonna take over a year for people to want to start working again they sometimes it's crazy it's like they can have the benefits from the government because government they have to show their you know they show they're caring for people. They always give out free money. So if you, people saying like they have a little bit of savings and then say they can take advantage of the situation, they travel here, they stay home, they do this, do that. So that kind of reduce, make, keep low the supply of labor. So driving up the price of the, the, the wages. And then they say the benefit of this, some people are gonna say, I wait a little bit longer. And then probably when you come to work, the, the wage will be much higher. But the profit margin is gone, so you don't mm. have a good profit margin for the business. They cannot survive either. So the, the the result will be less business will exist because some owners, the business owners, they just gave up. Some people are just saying like they are not playing this game anymore, and uh, so you will have less products or less uh, services available that will make it even higher. The inflation will go even higher. Well, does the government help businesses instead of? People like they people. help a little bit, but um, it's they're basing on the sales. But the sales is kind of inflated as well because the cost they don't they cannot they cannot calculate the cost, mm. uh, otherwise, it's kind of too much. They only everything based on the sales, but sales mm. like uh, you have when they take the commission 30 percent, but the sales already high. It's still high, but you don't have. So profit. the sales look high, so they don't want to help you, yeah. but they don't know that you have more expenses. Exactly. So you don't get to keep anything. Yeah, you have um, no margin. Wow, I'm lucky. I paint uh, paintings. It's, <laughs> they have no. They have exactly. All the margin. <laughs> it's a hundred percent margin. Yeah. it's it's amazing. It's like you are in the great position, and also you can travel, yeah. and you meet people, and you go to you you meet people to I. From your like other video, I saw you kind of go to different places to 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 catch their natural moment, right? Yeah, the traditional yeah. cultures and like I just finished painting a monk from Thailand um, that uh, my friend and I met in 2017. Things like that. I mean, I haven't gone anywhere since two years now. But oh, oh the pandemic thing. Well, we went to Vancouver, but that's not a real. Uh, 
Not that was really. nice. No, it was very, it was yeah. great. Uh, I like Vancouver. I think it's the best city in Canada. But uh, I miss really going to places. Yeah, I haven't been there. I need to go there. Because the idea of being a rich city, I just don't feel I belong there. So <laughs> Why? Because the, they said the the property price is high, but like for like IT guy, if you if you live on a salary, so you don't want to go to a place to uh, to live in a place everything is so expensive, and you have a regular income as a salary mm. income. So for me, it would be Toronto, Montreal would be the best, especially Montreal. I never like Mon Toronto, so Montreal. Me, me neither. I will. Any time we've gone, I just don't get it. It's like. New York, but without the the good, the culture that New York has, like the really good restaurants or the really good shows, but it has the negative aspects of New York. So, not a big fan of Toronto. It's a big city, but Montreal has, Montreal is more relaxing <laughs> to me. It's more relaxing. I'm learning my French. If my French is good enough, I will feel like really comfortable here. Yeah, how is your French right now? I can read a lot. Actually, oh. Before before we had our baby, so I set her goal, set up a goal to uh, to to be able to uh, speak French. So ten years ago, I was spending a lot of time like uh, learning French myself, like reading those Rocky French, uh, Rosette Stone. I spent a lot of time doing that materials. So the grammar, everything, I was pretty much okay with grammar. And the pronunciation is fine as well because French is pronunciation is kind of easier. Easier? Yeah. Than the, English? The, because English they like oh, really? the, the letter they pronounce differently. But French always the same. Most of the time it's the same. That's true. Yeah. yeah. No, if you think about the word beaucoup, it's beaucoup. Yeah, but that's, that's the that's way of how, how you how really you move your mouth. But the problem is uh, E A U always the same pronunciation. E A U together, but in English, if you see the A letter A in different words, they pronounce totally different. Oh, you're saying again yeah. different things yeah, the, can happen. Yeah, the French is on the pronunciation is amazing, and also with S or without S, the same, <laughs> and yeah. the, the plural and the singular. The when you the problem on the French is the the conjugation is crazy. The conjugation yeah. and also the liaison, the yeah. liaison for oh. the listening part is crazy. If oh you if you like um, talk to me like one by one. Sometimes I figure out the sound. But if you put like a two together liaison, yeah. and it's kind of crazy. <laughs> yeah, it is. So I give up. Mm -hmm. No, you shouldn't. Because I didn't give up in English. Mm -hmm. So you French, French is so fun. I guess if you 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 speak Russian for sure, you have Russian, it's not English, very French. Useful. Yeah. I wish I could trade that for French. <laughs> or Spanish is very useful. Yeah, Chinese French. is very useful. Mm -hmm. Russian is yeah, Russian not yeah. very useful but, but, at all. But, but Russia in China, we call it a it's a warring, it's a warrior's country. It's kind of Russia. It's kind of tough country. Uh, oh, warrior! Like yeah. I, I yeah. thought you said warrior. Like we worry, and I thought of my parents who worry a lot. Oh, and man. I was like, you're right. <laughs> it's it is tough. a warrior. It's, it's tough. It's a it's tough uh, country. It's kind of the mentality. It's mentally strong, super strong. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Am I mentally super strong? Oh, yeah, you're sure. Yeah. You're stubborn. <laughs> Stub stubborn? Yeah. yeah. Mm. The good thing about Russians, and there's many not good things, but the one good thing is that one of the few things I kept about being Russian for my personality is uh, we don't take rules too seriously. Seriously? I think the rule is the best. I really don't. I think I don't like rules at all. I, uh, I no. I think it's better to do what makes sense, and what makes sense is what makes sense to you, and not to what the government says. So, uh, for me, as as a Russian, I've kept that, and I'm quite happy about it. Because uh, if you follow rules too much, you're not gonna even start a business or do anything risky. You know. No. But recently, I I always follow the rocket thing, the Elon Musk. Yeah. So there's one guy, is the at, at the astronaut. He made a, a video to explain 
the the rocket engines designed by Russians. It's amazing. Russians really smart. Oh but yeah, they, really they design things crazy. The rocket engines, even the United States, the the RD one eighteen that rocket engine is coming from Russia. The the main engine right now they are using today. Yeah, R Russians are a very interesting yeah, they mixture design, yeah. of smart but also really irresponsible yeah. and also retarded at the same time. <laughs> So they design great stuff. They do, but they also uh, Russians have this culture of I don't care about stuff. So, for example, Russia is the only you know the um, the hydrogen collider in Switzerland where they shoot a particle. Oh yeah, that thing. Uh, yeah, at uh, super speed, uh, like higher than the speed yeah, of light, yeah. and they collide it and they see if it makes a black hole yeah. or something. Yeah. So Russia has one, and Russia is the only country on the planet where a guy. Mm -hmm stood in the way of the particle and got it in his head. Really? And the reason why, this is very Russian. So Russians are smart enough to build a particle collider. Yeah. We, we can do that. But then Russians are not smart enough to turn on the safety light in the passageway to show yeah. that the particle is on. So this engineer, he needed to go repair something in the tunnel, and he tells um, the software people, mm. can you turn off the particle? Mm. I'm going to be there in five minutes. Uh, they're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Then, but... They're Russian, so they forget to turn it off. He goes down there. The light bulb for the safety has burned out weeks ago. So it's off because the light bulb is dead. So he's like, oh, it's off. They turned it off. So, so he walks the in. Bulb. Uh, yeah, and he gets the particle in his head. He survived, actually, which is But crazy. that thing, but it's so tiny. Or it, the, yeah. It's, it's, it won't do any damage. Maybe we it, it, it did. It What's crazy is that it released so much radioactive energy, but it went so fast that it went through his head and it released the radio, like the bulk of the radioactive yeah. energy after it exited his head. But in the end, he was left with some, um, it's like he had a stroke, yeah. you know, and he yeah. needed medical help, but he survived. But th that's, that's the thing with Russians is like, okay, well, yeah, we'll make the stuff really smart, but then we'll like fuck it up <laughs> by forgetting to change the light bulb, you know? That's, that's, <laughs> that's the Russian so way. This, yeah, so this guy kind of a great experience. Uh, it's kind of, you have the, the fighter jets. The fighter jets is amazing. So There's Russian fighter jets? Yeah, or? fighter jets like uh, jet fighters. So, no. Oh, yeah, no, it's amazing. So they are, there's like, a, what is the Su-57, like a Su-57. They have two or three very famous design bureau. To, they they made the, the the best of the, but right now they are kind of Americans. They are way behind because they have electronic stuff. The computer technology is way behind Russia. Otherwise, they're still maneuvering. Capability is still Russian. Really? Yeah, those um, like... Uh, Jet fighters, like in in China, we always studied that, that kind of. You have. I mean, that's good, but we, we know what's better. It's making a company that other people use, like Apple. Like I, I'd prefer if uh, if I ran a country, I wouldn't focus so much on making my planes the best. I'd focus <laughs> on making a company where other countries buy my things. Uh, so that instead of shooting other countries to yeah. my planes, I'd rather sell them my products. Yeah. But when you have like Americans, when they have a lot of money, then they have good, great companies. They they put aside a lot of money to do the research. They produce the F twenty two, the best fighters. Yeah, jet fighters. I don't know why. What's the point of fighting? It's I don't get it. The the dominance. Dom. I don't understand dominance. To me, is your ability to sell people useful things. Job to one. Just give it a side. Are you done eating already? Yeah, I am. I'm very full. Everything was very good. It was very good. I love this chicken. No, um, dominance isn't about being aggressive. To me, it's about being friendly in such a way that you can offer your services to as many people as you can. That's the artist, the way of thinking. It's not realistic. In the real world, you know, it's like. Right now, that's why they say China is kind of a little bit, kind of a competitor, or like they say, a threat to the West. The West is too strong, too big. The economy is like the second in the world already. You know, it's, um, if you don't have the economy, you don't have the power. Well, China now has more wealthy people than America, 
and they're uh, making more new billionaires than uh, America and Beijing is the city with the most billionaires. Yeah. So it's pretty much almost won the first place. But back to the arts, it's like, uh, mm -hmm. but what, like um, the the Time magazine is that the 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 cover the people like you you to what it was a time person of the year uh, issue of 2014 mm -hmm. and um, you know every year they pick a time person yeah. of the year based on what is most popular yeah. that year so that year was Putin which they made me paint because I'm Russian even though I don't like Putin <laughs> but I'm Russian so I have to paint Putin that's how it works <laughs> but I don't mind I mean the, to work for Time magazine was something that was such a like a distant yeah. dream yeah. and the fact that I got it immediately was like pretty much a miracle it was uh, it was so unbelievable that when I got the email I, I was at the art atelier in California and I showed it to my teachers and they're like oh no way that's like a scam so yeah, I submitted the email to the yeah. there's like a scam button or whatever yeah. on Gmail so yeah. I submitted it to this is a scam <laughs> But then the guy kept responding, and I realized it's real, and uh, it was uh, very scary for me because uh, I was brand new to trying to be an artist, and this opportunity was like 10 years off. It was about 10 years too yeah. early. Yeah. That's um, crazy, yeah. No, but in life, if somebody uh, shows up, they give you the opportunity, you, you have to take it, even though you're uncomfortable. Yeah. Um, the more uncomfortable opportunities you're taking on, the faster you're growing and the more you grow into the opportunity. So at the start of my art career, I was always um, doing things that I'm not uh, supposed to be doing. Like I'm not, I've never done something like that or I don't know how to do it. Is, I don't know if it's is it digital or the, is it dig not digital? The Time Magazine was still digital okay. and that was the last digital painting I ever made. After that, I never made another one. Actually, until now, because now I'm making an NFT collection, but it's going to be released under a fake name and nobody will know, okay. so it's going to be okay. But the, do they pay you really well for that commission? At the time, I thought it was uh, it was the most I got paid at the time, which was 3,000 US dollars, okay. and it seemed like a lot, and now it doesn't seem yeah, like a lot. Yeah, exactly. Because things but uh, more, Most important, the recognition, you know, is the recognition of the... Is the magazine the uh, prestige? Yeah, it was. It was a really huge honor. Uh, it was really unbelievable that they gave me that opportunity. And the way it happened is, I happened to paint a, a little painting of Putin a couple of years before that. They found it. They liked it. And I respect them for one thing: is in most arts, it's all a popularity contest. Yeah. It's nothing yeah. to do with how good you are, yeah. which is the frustrating thing about it, especially in Canada. Yeah. In Canada, it's actually it's if you fit the current marketing narrative is, is what makes you a yeah. famous artist. It's nothing to do with your art. Uh, but I respect Time Magazine. They found an unknown artist. Yeah, they exactly. said, this so, guy is good. Yeah. We'll take a chance. If it doesn't work out, we'll get somebody else. They hire multiple people to make a cover at the same time. They don't tell. Uh, like They tell you, like, oh, you're the only guy on, on earth but always, uh, really they actually hired uh, four or five artists for the same cover yeah. they don't tell any of us and then at the end they pick the best one mm -hmm. and the best one was mine luckily but i really respect them they took an artist nobody knew they said this guy's good he deserves a chance and that's really rare because now in art you know you uh, you approach some some uh, celebrities or wealthy people and they get into a conversation with you to do some art mm -hmm. Then they end up like then they the conversation dies of course yeah. and then later on you see oh they bought a new artwork and it's some like modern art monstrosity that like took ten minutes for somebody to make and you check the artist and it's like oh okay so he's he's at the the gallery that makes them feel a certain way and it's not about the work yeah. itself um, so. That's what's disappointing about the the art thing is it's not a meritocracy; it's more of a popularity contest. And if you're popular, you get more popularity yeah, from yeah. that. You get more of what you already have. I, I'm really interested. You mentioned that meritocracy. Yeah. 
it's like um, I just read an article like from like Tanya, like she came to the restaurant. She wrote an article, really nice article on the medium.com. Never realized that there's a website called medium.com, like a Substack. The is called medium.com. It's for blogging, isn't it? Yeah, it's blogging. So, yeah. like she visited. And uh, she had a conversation with me. She wrote, wrote a nice article about me. So I read her. I read her other articles. One is about this one. She wrote so long about the the meritology. meritocracy. Yeah, meritocracy. And that one is. I get this thing in the United States is probably gonna t kind of separate the left and the right. I uh, guess. Uh, the, yeah, because right now meritocracy is not in its best shape right now. Yeah, it's, but um, it's more on the right side, right? It's, it's more the, the conservatives yeah, believe conservative, in meritocracy yeah. and the liberals yeah. believe in the bad, whatever virtues. they yeah, virtues. believe in. I haven't yeah. quite figured it out yet myself, <laughs> but they definitely are not about meritocracy. Yeah, because that thing is like the, the, the lady, like she wrote the article like a super long, like I read the almost like several pages long, like mm -hmm. on the medium.com. But I, Did I she think, defend meritocracy? Or? I think she she's against but she's my best friend now. It's really my friend. Like, like she kind of two friends. Her husband, a friend. It's amazing. Like we, like she wrote a really nice article on that one about me, the, like our meeting. And then I, this one, uh, she's on the left side for sure. Uh, in kind of the most people on the left side. So yeah. she was. She wrote a really long article and against that uh, meritocracy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I like to read it because yeah. um, I'd be curious how some how to argue against. Meritocracy yeah. means giving the result to the person that performed the best. Yeah. Whereas non-meritocracy means giving the result to the person that you think needs it more. Yeah. So um, you will see. Do you know the Canada we produce in Canada? It's, it's amazing. Canada is a the country with the population of thirty some million. Thirty two. Thirty. Yeah. Years. It produced a lot of uh, great people. Like uh, you know, there's a professor called. Uh, uh, Jordan Peterson, Peterson yeah. Yes, yeah, I um, guess he's God saw is his friend. He's actually a teaching right over there. Yeah, yeah. He's also well known. Yeah, he will be hundred percent on this thing because it's like when you say equal is not the equal treatment. It depends. You need to reward the effort or whatever things, right? Like uh, I, I watched some of his uh, the speeches and his argument with the the British lady. What is the is the host it was amazing, got a lot of yeah, 40 that. million, 50 million views on the YouTube. But you know, for example, at Harvard University, um, they punish Asians by reducing. Um, so, say when you apply to Harvard yeah. and they see your face, yeah. because you have your face, yeah. you deserve to, um, you have to score 130 points extra because of how <laughs> your face looks, which I think is called racism, but they think is called progress. Um, and the reason why is that um, they feel like there's too many Asian people at Harvard. But what they don't take into account is that Asian people on average study 2.5 times as much per yeah. week yeah. as non-Asian people do, which I think they deserve to get a result for that time that they spend. Um, so that's what I mean by uh, meritocracy and that it's not in the best shape right now. So. I feel like there's some people putting in effort and they're getting punished uh, for the effort that they put. Yeah, in. a lot of people think you have to be equal, right? But some people think the equal output that would be a yeah. I, I see. That's that's really really interesting thing. Before, I think most artists people oh, artists don't agree with me. Um, exactly, most uh, artists, artists would kill well, me. Yeah, exactly. A lot of artists artist, artist, they would be totally on the left, right? Not extremely, a, yeah. violently, aggressively so, yeah. they would uh, cry if they heard me talk, which I, I still, I talk what I think and uh, they don't like me a lot of the time and that's fine. Um, oh, I, I thought like uh, a lot of artists are like you now. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Artists are uh, not They're still on the left. Uh, There's still a lot of... Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, I don't know why, but... But the left I, is changing as well. It's, uh, it's before... I'm, I'm from like I came here only 15 years ago so as I said I spent a lot of time um, spent a lot of time like uh, learning English by watching those kind of debates or the, the topics uh -huh. to, to listen to people talk to have their opinions I see both sides for me I don't
care about left or right. My first uh, yeah, balance to you. Is yeah. Uh, also, for me, I want to learn French, uh, English. So <laughs> <laughs> the opinion is not so important to me. <laughs> but I, I realized, like, um, before we call progressive, right? Like, f coming from, like, uh, like uh, this kind of strong mentality like Russia or China, right? Little bit strong mentality. Mm -hmm. So we like the progressive actually at the beginning. I really like the progressive is caring, like more equal, everything. And also they kind of um, have a lot of, they defend for a lot of rights. But right now it's kind of changed. Right now, like they, they kind of on the people, a lot of people on the academic field or some people on the really on the left side or like they kind of more authority. They they like more authority. They displaying people. They they kind of displaying the same group of people. They ten years ago they were like, we need to have like this. We fight for this. Fight for that. We, we need a diversity of opinion. Exactly. Which means you can only have our opinion. Exactly. <laughs> that, that's what diversity of opinion. When means. I when when I started learning English, that was the thing attracted me a lot. They they like the diversity, right? You, I That's what attracted to me too. And I, yeah. the only time I've ever voted in my yeah. life was for liberals. Yeah. And then I feel like things have gone weird in the last two years. <laughs> Seriously. Because I really That's, like the idea of yeah. diversity of opinions. Yeah. Like, exactly. I like that. Yeah. But that's not what it's we're not doing happening. Now. Yeah. Not, exactly. That's not the program. When I went to university, I think it was still fine, you know, but... Uh, now I hear uh, you just like have to have a certain yeah. opinion. If I, the the point is like if you say stupid things, you, you see, let him say stupid things. People won't believe him. That's all, right? It's, it's fine. You just you oh. can you don't want to shut hey, shut you, up. You shut should let people yeah, express exactly. their opinions yeah, that are wrong because it's good for you because then that person reveals to you that yeah. they're not a person that yeah. you want to associate yeah, with. Yeah, exactly. So and you don't like yeah. yeah, and if you make this environment where oh you're only allowed to have a, like ABC opinion, yeah, yeah. then everybody's hiding, and the result is that you don't know if the person you're talking to is a person that you could get along with because everybody's pretending right yeah. right now it's crazy it's like a, it's kind of it's kind of opposite what i learned at the beginning i thought like we're living in different world like at the beginning i really like okay that's great like uh, you have different voice and then you maybe your opinion i don't like but you should have right to see whatever you want to say that's what they defended at the beginning now they're doing okay if i don't like this you better shut up <laughs> that's, that's kind of it's, it's yeah. th they are doing like one hundred eighty degree opposite. It's kind of interesting. So well, I'm, I'm glad I'm not the only person that feels uh, confused because uh, I'm as confused I'm, totally. I'm learning English. English is not my first language, but <laughs> they're confusing you. <laughs> it's confusing, actually. It's kind. Of, I still listen to a lot of those kind of uh, stuff. Like some of them not making sense. You sometimes you need to make sense, right? Uh, I still like that. What I liked about Canada when I showed up from Russia, Russia was a bit more racist, a bit yeah. more sexist. We show up to Canada, and Canada said in the year two thousand when we arrived, Very Canada said, right? "Very nice. Everybody's equal. Everybody's going to get the same thing. Everybody has a chance to do anything." And I, and over time, as I lived in Canada as a kid, I was like, "Yeah, I, I understand this value. I really like it, and I want to stand behind this value." And now it's like. Uh, my friend is applying for an art competition in Montreal, which art competitions in Montreal are the worst. Ever. Like, <laughs> it's just the worst. So he's applying for an art competition, and it literally says, you must be a person of color. Like, this is a no white people competition. Yeah, so he, he can't apply to that one. He's applying to another one. Then there's a questionnaire. As per, like, you put your art, then there's a questionnaire. Wait a minute. For, don't worry about your art. We have some questions for you. Uh, are you transgender this that are you ethnic are you a refugee are you like at least handicapped or disabled like and my friend is there is like i'm they're like are you female at least and he's like i'm a guy i'm sorry <laughs> yes they're like are, are you you're white is like, yeah i'm white so oh, okay so then he clicks off the thing doesn't he can't even complete the uh, so that's, that's how weird. it works yeah. and the art is art like uh, it's art is art like uh, Express yourself, right? The, I, I guess that's the thing. It's really weird. I think the, like a lot of artists, like if they are true artists, they should be able to express themselves, and also they should support the people who express themselves, right? That's the, 
It, the art is a form of expression, yeah, right? And it, also, who is expressing it, or what color, gender, or sexual thing they are. Like, for example, I'm actually judging a competition mm -hmm. right now, a British competition. Yeah. And I opened my, because uh, uh, they, they have an app where you get all the submissions. Yeah. So I opened the person. Yeah. I don't read a single word of their thing. Yeah. yeah. Zero words. I don't even read their name. They write all this, like, about their feelings yeah. and all their, like, skip all that. I go straight to the art. Uh, I have no idea who the hell they are. I don't care if it's a turtle or a cat. Like, I don't care. I look at the art. Is it good or not? That's what yeah, makes sense to me. It's the, that's the <laughs> thing. that You know, the, 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 in front of every the, the, like, judicial court, you have the justice lady, right? Lady justice. Like, the has to be blindfolded, right? <laughs> I guess. You know, when you judge, you have to be blind. You don't see... Those kind of white, the black, or the Asian, you know, the you know, you, you have to be want to be fair. You have to kind of they kind of excuse your, you know, whatever the, the blind, you know, the that's the thing. Fifteen years ago, I came here like, see, this is a great idea. You have yeah, the justice yeah, lady, like uh, you, far, yeah. yeah, you you close your eyes and then to judge by the merits, right? Everything based on merits instead of you know, instead of like. Uh, like all these kind of other criteria, you have to check this, check that, you know. Because now it's all about being um, fashionable, right? So every company, government, politician, artist, all people want to do is they want to signal how fashionable they are to other humans, you know? Yep. So everybody just wants to do what's popular. And then, uh, as an artist, if you don't do what's popular, well, then that might be difficult. But uh, I think a lot of people will still appreciate it. That's crazy. It's, yeah, right now I'm still learning English, so I'm I'm just get really confused a lot of times. Like <laughs> this, like what they believed ten years ago, now it's the opposite. And really like the word you said, the Mario, Mario meritocracy. Yeah. yeah, that's I have problem pronouncing this word. Meritocracy. Yeah, I will send you the article. Well, you won't need this word in five years. There'll be no meritocracy, so <laughs> you won't need it. <laughs> Don't worry about it. It's a, it's a, it's great because I understand that when I read the article from the friend Tania, I understand like uh, he wants to say like this is not correcting the society, but uh, it's a very long article, and I I learned a lot of from that because I want to see. Sometimes, like, what is the reasoning behind? I, I probably can follow you that article. It's really put a lot of effort. I'll be very yeah. curious yeah. because... But sometimes you see people in, in Chinese community as well. We have WeChat groups. Sometimes people argue. <laughs> like, we have five, 500 people. 500 people in the same group. We call the... Just 500 friends or something? Or some, or some people you never know. Some, some people in the... This 500 people, they never speak. They never talk anything. They never say anything in the group. They just... But how did they get in this group? Is it... Is uh, somebody invited? No, somebody invited. It's... Uh, this group uh, specifically is kind of the Montreal Chinese IT, pro, IT professionals. So oh, all... Uh -huh. in, like I'm one of them. So... People, they invite them into group, but like in, of the 500 people, only 20 or 30 people, they, every day they say something, they write something in the group. Mm -hmm. So sometimes we have a little bit argument on one thing, like one news event came out. So happened one news and then people saying opinion on this side and people opinion on that. If you disagree with yeah, you're a bad person, yeah, yeah. you have to think what I think. Or yeah, you're exactly. Bad. Sometimes you will see regarding China, regarding United States, and kind of sometimes those people thinking like they just cannot talk to each other like there's no middle ground at all sometimes like uh, even like uh, that make me think like the in United States or Canada the left right they don't have even you want to see their reasoning but sometimes when when they put out all these reasonings you just don't want to see you don't understand sometimes all the people you see there but if you don't have that uh, like uh, ideas like you want to be left or right, you probably will say this guy is kind of crazy, kind of well, nonsense. you shouldn't say, oh, I'm left or right. You should say I'm a person. Exactly. And present your yeah. argument yeah. to me and yeah. then I will 
yeah, take probably. this argument or not based on what you tell me. Exactly. And then you could have a mix of them, yeah. and then some would be traditionally yeah. left, some would be traditionally yeah. right, and you're going to get some sort of mix. But yeah, what I don't like about today is that people have put themselves into categories. A lot of the world is like that. Even as artists, you're an artist, so that means that you're not uh, responsible, that you're lazy, or that you're drunk. Um, there's a lot of uh, roles that people expect from different things, you know, instead of letting people be individuals. But I think you are not typical artist as well. No. From I, the beginning, I, I think you have. I don't get you, along with them very, you, you, very well. Also, also, I think <laughs> I, I make them angry. <laughs> I guess you are kind of artist slash business. You are very uh, smart on business as well. You have the maybe because you are 32, 33, I'm right? I'm 31. Yeah, 31. So you yeah. are this generation is super young. So you, you kind of the I'm new super young. Yeah. I guess as art, we ex <laughs> for me, I expect I the artists are gonna be like. 50, like with beard, like the white hair, you know. Well, I will be one day. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of artists, they're very, very like, uh, when they achieve something, you see they're 50, 60 years old. The older, the better. That's oh, the best of your career. Enough, uh, this, this trait is really great. You Every year you grow, like for the programmers, like if you are after 30, 40 years old, they think you are not quick enough, you, you don't. But for the artist, it's opposite. Yeah, the, you, the, the older you are, and then you're more value, more valuable. But it's um, it's a funny thing. It's while your art typically becomes better the more you do it. It does seem like a lot of artists about the age fifty five they yeah. begin to get worse for yeah. whatever reason. Actually, not get, better. Get worse? worse? Really? Yeah, I thought yeah, it was yeah. more recognition or no, more maybe respect. More, maybe more, more respect. respect but yeah. I'm talking about the, the skill, the meritocracy, not the what the humans think about yeah. them, but. Um, what the humans think about them changes from year to year, and it's independent of how good your art is that year. For example, last year I had a tremendous, ridiculously fantastic year. That is like, you can't even believe it. Uh, this year, ugh. And uh, this year I'm definitely not a worse painter than last year, but it's just how, how the culture is going, like what's the... The con it's a, it, it doesn't necessarily have to do with how well you're doing. And what's hard for me is to not take it personally and to just understand that the world is complicated. Or let's say your restaurant, now you have higher supply costs. Maybe you're going to feel like, oh, I'm a loser because my restaurant doesn't make as much profits. At least that's sometimes how I feel. Like if I don't produce as much for me it's money, I feel bad. But yeah. the... It's not entirely up to us, and the world is a little complex, yeah. and how the economy is, and how the humans are, you can't control that. So, over time, you're going to get better at what you do, and over time, people will give you more recognition. But what's difficult is that from year to year, like people that have jobs, you're going to get paid uh, more every year, yeah, yeah. and that's just what's going to happen. But when you're a self-employed artist, you're going to make so much money one year and you're gonna be like oh i've arrived i've made it i'm a big boy now uh, are, are you proud of me dad uh yeah. stuff like that and then next year you're like oh, i'm gonna do the same but more i'm i'm arrived i'm here now and then next year comes and, so, <laughs> and you have to be able to deal with that which is kind of the difficult part of being self-employed right now you are i guess you are at the really good spot right in your life like you like like uh, you have several commissions every year and then like a lot of time you can do whatever you want right? yeah i mean no last year's commissions i uh, are good for the next yeah. three years yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. uh, this year not so hot i'm getting it's a pretty like standard year it's just at a certain point when you when you have a year where you accomplish yeah. like some level yeah. that was beyond what you thought yeah. you were going to get by a lot, yeah. you think that you've changed as a human and you're now a magical like unicorn person. Yeah. Uh, and then the year after that, you have a normal year again. That normal year feels quite uh, shameful. Really down, really a bit like you kind of feel yeah, you like feel you like should a loser, go up, yeah. right? Because you always have to, at least my psychology is it always has to go up uh, and it has to go up by a lot. Yeah. And if it doesn't, then I'm a bad person. <laughs> um, 
this the self-inflict pressure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and put, it, it works. It gets yeah. results over time. If you yeah. feel that way, you'll probably yeah. grow faster. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's 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 a bit funny. Uh, if you do really well one time, the next time you don't do that well, you're gonna feel a little stupid. So, <laughs> but when you're uh, when you have a salary, you you don't your performance doesn't fluctuate yeah, yeah. anywhere. You know, it's just it, it's, you're fine. It, yeah. But how do you guys like uh, as art, artists? Like how do you guys connected or with other? How do you get uh, kind of people find you or like how do you have a special network or something like exhibition? Oh. Those are not so useful, at least to me. Like um, I've started getting into uh, physical shows um, in um, 2020. Mm -hmm. And my uh, paintings were flying to America and costing a lot of shipping costs. <laughs> and nothing happens, really, from that. And all the success comes from online. The social media, maybe. It's people in my direct messages on Instagram. And what's really unbelievable, what I failed to recognize years ago when uh, Instagram first came out, I was like, oh, it's a child's thing. It's what I think about TikTok now, but I'm probably wrong. So I was like, oh, it's a child's play. It's useless. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, I didn't it's... take it seriously. Yeah. But I still don't use TikTok. <laughs> I, I like know. I, I can't. But I know I'm wrong, but I can't. Yeah. But you, you're like, oh, it's just kids. Well, it's not just kids. You, get D, you can yeah. DM a celebrity. Yeah. Like, there's some rappers that I like. Yeah. And I just message them. Yeah. And because I have a little bit of followers and because I paint, uh an okay amount of the time to actually answer and we can have a conversation which is a really incredible opportunity that you could never have before so if you don't perform well it's your fault i feel like uh, yeah with especially with your you kind of speak like the the product speak for yourself right it's amazing yeah. well, it's the, the stuff you produce thank you it's just unfortunately it has no practical utility in the way that food or yeah. doing science does um, I actually think science is a much more useful pursuit than uh, being an artist. <laughs> uh, I find artists to be non-useful uh, members of society, yeah. to be honest. I always think or art, less useful. The art is the the art is the. I always say it's like a lubrication of the society, because lubrication, lubrication is kind of like gears. You have to have lubricant, otherwise the fraction will be too much. The be, between the people. Art is not logical, but the science is logical. It's the efficiency, the lowering the cost of production, everything is logical. But that's for the society, the technology, but not for the art. But you need art. Art is not like something you need to paint, like handle two paints a day, three paints a day. So that's not efficiency, it's not like uh, very logical, but it's expression. This kind of the expression to have this kind of a uh, it's very random, like recognition or some, you have the, the, the some stuff, people just like your stuff. It's not like uh, by kind of, you cannot grade them by things. That's the I mean, beauty well, of the art. I, I can grade it based on yeah. my own preferences. Yeah. In fact, I'm literally grading, it's, as a judge in a contest, yeah. I'm literally grading. Okay. But everybody has different preferences and it's hard for it's, somebody it's like very me subjective. to yeah. yeah, I hate that it's... Uh, I think I'm like more of a, a science person, or maybe I'm a little bit like autistic or something. Yeah, but yeah that's why you're saying uh, you. Uh, I'm saying that you're a little bit artist slash business. You you have the you have the idea of the lo lot of logic behind. Yeah, like in my mind, it's hard for me to believe that art is uh, subjective because in my view, it's like yes, yeah, so people have different opinions, but some people. Are more wrong than other people yeah. so in the end it kind of to me it feels objective but that's because I'm coming to it from a realist yeah. painter like I don't do modern art like yeah. is I'm a realist painter and then there the metrics are more clear yeah. about how you're gonna evaluate oh it. yeah yeah that's the difference that's some people they have the abstraction or the yeah I don't understand yeah. I don't want to understand I don't want to have anything yeah, yeah. to do with that so uh, for me when I look at realist art and I, I collect art also. Yeah. Every year since I started being an artist, uh, I've bought paintings from other people. Okay. Because I'd find it quite strange if 
you're an artist or you're something something you expect people to trade you money for rectangles with paint on them if you if you want people to be willing to do that to you it would make sense that you have to believe in that behavior yeah. so you have to do the same so i'm actually quite <laughs> suspicious of artists that don't collect art i find that to be uh, suspicious yeah. so i've been collecting art and when i do it i there's a couple of paintings i got this year where i don't um, i don't quite remember the name of the artist i don't care really but i just i like the art i like the price we made a transaction yeah. i don't remember their name yeah. uh because for me, it's uh, it's a very objective. This is good. This is not. I don't care if like a turtle. Okay, if a turtle made it, it would be more yeah. impressive. So okay, that's a bad example. Okay, if I, literally an animal made it, it would be cooler. Uh, but outside of that, it doesn't matter to me who made it or how famous they are, how many followers they have or okay. don't have, or what gallery or what the, what magazine worked yeah. with them or not. I, I really don't care. Um, but what I find with the most people is that they get affected by those things. It's yeah. like, oh, this but you are more famous. focused on the techniques or something, or the, or the, or yeah, the... yeah, yeah, yeah. But how do you? Yeah, but for... unfortunately, too much focused on the technique, I would say. Yeah, yeah that's I, I always think like you kind of have the business side of that thing. You are. If well, it's a limitation yeah. of mine is I have this logical problem where uh, I'm very focused on the technique and yeah. I don't think about like the subject. I don't want to express yeah. some like thought or some philosophy yeah. uh, in my painting. I'm comfortable expressing what I think and talking like how yeah. we're doing yeah. now, but I don't feel that artists need to do that with their artwork. And I also are you feel... paint a face the one day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, uh, why? Manifesto. <laughs> no, but they do that. That's, uh, I think in the mainstream society, people think like, oh, artists, it means you have to like comment on culture or something. Yeah. I'm okay to comment on culture with my mouth, but yeah, if I'm painting something, I'm trying to make a useful object for you to enjoy. Okay. And your enjoyment of the object that I'm making shouldn't be about me expressing my uh, personal opinions it should be something that i do for you so that you can like it and that you can hang it and you can give me lots of money to do yeah. that so i don't understand this whole like artists are like the expressors of culture like first of all who are artists they're not they're like not educated well they're not like what why do they even get to are, are they like lawyers political scientists are they presidents like why do they even get to uh, exactly. have opinions anyway they are not <laughs> that, that's like the, what qualifies me to that's, decide that's not, how society should work that's not the strong point actually like the singers a lot of famous singers they have a lot of political views but that's they have the the right to express their views but a lot of time they are not close to the reality a lot of time because they're not good at that sometimes just because you're good at making uh, Chinese food doesn't yeah. make you a good sniper. Yeah, exactly. It's two different jobs. Exactly. Yeah. It's not, yeah. uh, so, but, but I am comfortable expressing myself with my mouth, like as yeah. humans. Yeah. But I just think if you're trying to make some artwork, you're trying to do a useful service for people. Yeah. And it doesn't seem to be very useful to me to... Uh, like what's popular, especially in Canadian art, like what's popular in like the the, the hip art yeah. way is to criticize society and how it's all wrong and yeah. how like it needs to be different, but only in one way. There's, there's only one way that it's wrong. It's not <laughs> like, because I can criticize society, but not my way. My way is not the right way. Yeah. Um, and it's all about like complaining and saying this is all not right yeah. and we have to change it yeah. and I'm going to change it. Say you're making me Chinese food, which you are, you're not like part of the dish. You don't give me my diced chicken and then tell me how like my society is wrong and how it's changed. Because that's not your, your service is to give me the food and then I eat it and then I'm happy, right? Yeah. So I feel like art is just a, a service. It's a strange one, not a very useful one. Uh, but let's try to make it a little more useful by making pleasant things that people can enjoy. And let's not, you know, shame them or criticize culture or them, you know? Exactly. But on the technical side, I think, like, when you, it's always fascinating, like, when you 
paint like a, a person. At the beginning was nothing, and then at the end, like everything come together, come out together like a person. Is that like a big planner? Like you guys all plan like a big picture? Like it's like you could be a all these artists. Like when you do that technique, techniques like it's like have first layer of something, second layer of something. Will that be like a three mention, five mention thing or? It really depends on the artist. So people have different brains. Uh, for example, I think you guys have really weird within, brains. Within artists, we have different brains yeah. inside the group of artists. So for example, my friend Alex, who's a great painter here yeah. in Montreal as well. Uh, when he starts an artwork, he has a brain that he starts with a very tight and careful mm -hmm. drawing. So if you were to watch, let's say if he made a video, you would see him do the lines and it would be clear what's going to happen pretty much mm -hmm. right from the start. And then he'll build on it over time. My brain is more messy and more like I'll figure it out later risk-taking brain, you know? And so that means I start, like, I just rub in yeah, the you... color approximately where it is, and then as I go along, I try to use what skill I have to fix it and to, like, keep it together. So it's, like, a highly uncontrolled, like, by the seat of your pants type of painting. Yeah. Other artists are not... But at the end, it's, it came out great. Like, oh, how do you guys do... But if you put a one stroke, it's bad. Like, you don't have an eraser to... Okay, this is the bad one. So you come up with something to, to cover it or something? Oh, in oil painting, you, you have a lot of room for uh, going over the thing, fixing. Worst comes to worst, you take a palette knife, you scrape some paint off. Um, so oil paint is great for my type of brain, which yeah. is the start messy and figure it yeah. out and hope it's going to turn out okay. Brain. Uh, there's other things like watercolor where my friend's brain is required because watercolor you don't once you put a paint yeah. um, watercolor is a thing where to show a lighter color like let's say white you actually have to leave the paper showing and the watercolor stains the paper darker so you can't undarken paper which means that anything you do is the final thing that is going to be. It's not reversible. Uh, which makes watercolor the most dangerous and the most intense and like gangster. Mm -hmm. uh, which is funny because usually it's like old ladies and aunts and stuff yeah. that take up watercolor because they think it's cute. But what's funny is that watercolor is not cute. It's actually the most ruthless yeah, very... and Genghis Khan type of <laughs> like unforgiving, brutal medium that old ladies just love. But the right paint for old ladies is actually oil paint because that you can do anything. Yeah, you can solve. You, you have a chance to correct. Oh. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So if somebody is uh, starting out, uh, I would actually recommend to take up oil paints, which is the opposite of the advice that Canadians would give, because okay. they're like, "Oh, oil paints the most expensive medium. It's complicated." It's complicated, but it also gives you the chance. It has all the possibilities in it, yeah. whereas watercolor is contained in a less possibilities in there, more specialized. You guys are amazing. Have this? Have you have you seen the the the, the mural or something on a wall? That kind of a graffiti thing, but they kind of put a mural or something. Where? Like the wall, like those kind of artists. Oh. Who's that? The, what, the painting that uh, Alex painted on the on the wall. Oh, yeah. oh the the mural mural, uh, mural thing. Yeah, yeah, I like the the Cohen mural painting there on Saint Denis. Quite yeah. good. There's a, in Australia. There's a guy on the Instagram Lush something. That guy got like uh, almost half, uh, almost a million followers on the mm -hmm. on the Instagram. He always paint the mural. Like, amazing the. Because uh, his account got all tons of that stuff. Yeah, because graffiti art and all that type yeah. of stuff is quite popular. Yeah. Like, there's an artist called Alec Monopoly, and um, he's terrible. And what he does, he just paints the Monopoly yeah. man with money. Um, and he doesn't paint it like with like different colors. It's all just like cartoon style and yeah. very spray paint, very fast. But because art is subjective, apparently. Uh, the humans, they they look at the art and they determine what does it what does it say about me if I am to like it. 
So let's say when somebody like Alec Monopoly does the Monopoly Man, it has yachts and cars and stuff. I think it makes the buyer feel like they're rich or something yeah. because it has dollar yeah. signs yeah. in it. Whereas, which is kind of a very direct way of thinking. Whereas I feel like before the quality of the art would make you yeah. feel rich, but now it's like you literally put the dollar sign in the thing. So humans have become quite simple that yeah, way, yeah. very direct. And also you mentioned the NFT, that thing is very trendy. Uh, yes, I was it's, fighting it's, against it, but I give up and I'm doing it. But so. the, for the artists, that's well, almost a bad thing it. right now. I guess it's really good to artists right now. They can sell their stuff quite easily. It's quite strange because uh, me being unfortunately a logical person I, yeah. I had a lot of confusion about nft yeah but i said you know what it however i feel about it has nothing to do with if the people like it so i uploaded yeah. some nfts and i actually sold a bunch yeah. and um a good portion of this year's income was actually thanks to nfts yeah ft I, uh, and what's cool yeah. about it is when i saw an oil painting yeah. that means I'm Just going to UPS, I'm, uh, I'm shipping it, It's they're going to break it on the way there, and I lose the painting because the client... But you just need to send, you can just send a picture or something. Yeah, with NFT, yeah. you don't, you just, you you, don't since you're selling them nothing, yeah. you're losing nothing, but yeah. they're selling you Ethereum. So it's actually a very good system for the artist. It's just, yeah, exactly. I had a lot of problems yeah. with it because I'm not used to... Um, selling people nothing in exchange for money like when i have a client and it's they want a write of yeah it's a it's a, it kind of a write of uh... I, I just felt like i was robbing people i guess <laughs> but uh they because usually let's say somebody gets a commission i work really hard to do what they want to make like i say it's yeah. any other family member to make them happy send yeah. it they have the thing and i would pride myself in that the client yeah. is happy with what happened yeah. and they're happy with the money they spent but with NFTs, it's uh, it's felt a bit <laughs> gross because <laughs> I felt like I'm facilitating somebody making a mistake. That's like a, it's the same like a cryptocurrency, the same thing. <laughs> cryptocurrency. But look, people made a lot of money on yeah. these things, yeah. and uh, you know, instead of being confused about it, yeah. I actually decided to give up, and I'm making an NFT collection. Mm -hmm. Uh, that I'll release under a different name so I can yeah. not feel so bad after. <laughs> um, and I've been working on it now for uh, two weeks every day. Uh, and honestly, it's whether or not I agree with it, this is now the most effective way to sell art at this particular I, second. I think, yeah. I think will, so. will it be six months from now? I don't think so. I think it's going to crash, but... Right now it is, and my job is to respond to how the world works instead of be confused okay. about it all the time. So this is currently how the world works, so I'm doing what the world says. That's very practical. It's me, like you're doing business. Like <laughs> Every day I need to think about my business, how the business survives. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if, if that's what they want, look, it's, it's easier for me. It's just, it feels weird. Oh, who knows? Maybe I'm wrong. I have a friend. He bought an NFT for 2000 bucks US. He sold it for 80000 bucks just two months later. Worked for him. So you yeah. can't complain. It looks like it's going to so, stay for a while, actually, the NFT. Uh, because I'm I working IT. Yeah, well, we don't have leave us. So. Okay, great. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, I guess, like... Uh, I work in IT. I follow that kind of this trend. Like NFT is a is a big thing, especially for the the, the people doing the art, so they can sell easily. It's crazy. They'll sell it. There's a picture of a boat that got sold for six hundred fifty thousand US dollars. It makes the whole prospect of having a job yeah. seem uh, kind of uh, really. Yeah. You don't don't encourage people having a. No, I, I think it's having a job is a massive scam. I can't believe anybody does it. It's a terrible deal. I've made much more money doing what I love doing than I've ever made having a job. In fact, I made more money than the president of my company at which I worked doing what I love. You can sell pictures of boats now. It's 
that. It's a world of opportunity, and you better take it. Is how I feel. About yeah, it. it's amazing. Actually, like, what's your plan now? Like, uh, you you still live in Montreal, right? Yes. And how do you think of Montreal? Like, <laughs> I don't uh, like it. I really I don't like. That's li too honest. <laughs> oh, okay. I like. It's okay. <laughs> no, I don't. Uh, it, it's not my type of thing. I really like the restaurants here, but uh, I'd like to live in a more ambitious city that has more. Because Montreal, like you said, it's a relaxing, yeah, yeah. easy, like the rent is reasonable yeah. type of city, which is great. Mm -hmm. But I feel like as a young person, that's not necessarily the stage of life. Yeah, where exactly. that would be what I prioritize. So I wanted for Ansel and I to go check out Dubai and uh, see how it is in Dubai. The other benefit is you don't have to pay taxes there, mm -hmm. which... Uh, will be quite useful over yeah, the yeah. years. Like when you, you don't think about it until one year you do really well, mm -hmm. and then the amount of taxes I paid is more than I made in having a job. Yeah, I've paid just the taxes part is more than the job, the job I had, yeah. which is you, you just never believe you never like your brain didn't believe that that's going to happen mm -hmm. to you, but one day if you behave correctly, it will happen to you. And then I think it would be best to uh, protect that yeah. money and go to Dubai, and then you can invest it into stocks and then grow that money, and then you can have a good future. So I'd like to um, check out Dubai. I'm not sure if Ansal does, but what she wants is uh, very important as well. So That's amazing. Uh, you have a really lovely couple, and uh, you were in the, I guess you were in the camera as well. Or you sit there. Yeah. Probably you were, yeah, you were in. Double check. That's amazing. Yeah. And uh, something else to add? Like, uh, thank you for coming. It's amazing. Oh, my like, pleasure. Uh, know a little bit more art now, <laughs> a little bit more painting. Well, I'm a strange person to learn about art from. I think if you got other artists, you'd have a different. But for sure, you speak your mind. That's amazing. Really amazing. Um, you speak your I mind. I think, honestly, I'm a little retarded, so I don't know how to not do that. I think if I was smarter, I would know how to not speak my mind. I just don't know how. That's <laughs> really all it is. That's a true album. <laughs> thank, you for, uh, thank you for coming. Thank my you. pleasure. Yeah. You want to have more food or something? I'm full. It was very good. Okay, great. We wrap up here. Thank you guys for thank you. watching. Thank you. And thank, thank you, you for inviting us. Thank you, Pavel. Uh, the, the last name? Sokov. Sokov. Why Russian always cough, cough, like everything cough. Did you know sock means and juice? Suki. Really? Juice of, yeah, juice. It's an unfortunate last name, not the best. Great, thank you. Thank <laughs> you again, thank you.